Hey guys, so this is not going to work, so let me bring it down some. Hey. So, I'm cooking dinner today. And I said, why not come on live and include my peeps? All right, let's see here. Let me clean off my hands so I can see better. There we go. Yeah. Nice. All right. So I know you guys aren't used to this, right? Yeah. Well, today I'm going to be making some pesto, fresh, fresh, fresh pesto for the first time. Um, yeah. So that's what we're doing. Hey! Alright, so I'm gonna bring out my blender here because we're definitely gonna need the blender. Thanks! Hey! Alright, so. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, let me see if I can get this back on. There we go. All right. Hey. Thank you. All right. So here is our salmon, which, as I said, I'm going to do some salmon as well. And then we're going to go ahead and get our seasonings out. Oregano, adobo, some pine nuts, cayenne, pepper, black pepper and some smoked paprika. Okay, so we're using these seasonings. So I'm gonna use some all-purpose seasoning, oregano, adobo seasoning, cayenne pepper, smoked paprika, black pepper. Our pine nuts are for our pesto. So my salmon's already been washed. Thank you. So we're gonna just spread some of our seasoning. No, I don't measure. If you measure, great. I don't measure. All right. Now, because I use all-purpose seasoning, I'm gonna use a little bit of adobo. I don't want it to be too heavy, but remember it is fish, so it picks up flavor very quickly. I'll put it out here there. There we go. Some oregano, which we're also gonna leave out because we're gonna use it in our pasta. Some cayenne pepper, just for some spice. Smoked paprika. You can use whatever seasoning you want. I am like big on my seasonings. And then some black pepper. And then I take my hands and I just rub it in. Because I'm not gonna do it in the oven, I'm actually going to do it in a pan where I'm gonna pan sear it. So I wanna make sure that my salmon gets time to pick up all of this goodness. That's why I seasoned up first. But Okay, so our salmon seasoned, we're gonna put it to the side. We're gonna wash our hands. Okay, so for our pesto, you're gonna need your blender. Okay, and then for the pesto, where did I put everything? Here we go. Some salt. So for the pesto, you're gonna need fresh basil, garlic, salt, and pine nuts. And then of course you're gonna need some olive oil. Okay. 
And we will need some extra virgin olive oil. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna put our pine nuts. If you have a nut allergy, then of course you wouldn't use your pine nuts. I'm gonna put all of that in there. For our garlic, we love garlic. I probably could have used a spoon, but I chose not to. It's fine. We're doing it the home way. And then we are going to get our basil. So here's the thing with basil. Well, actually I'll add my salt first. So I use pink Himalayan salt. And then I also put a little bit of black pepper in there. With basil, you don't actually wash basil. I know that sounds very weird, but you don't wash basil. Reason being is if you wash the basil before you make the pesto, if you wash it before you do the pesto or right before you do the pesto, guess what? Now you have water in your pesto. So if you're gonna wash the basil, you wash it days ahead and allow it to dry down or dry before you use it. So in this case, we're just going to add our basil here. It smells so good. Okay. I'm using stems, everything. And then I have a pot of boiling water going for our pasta. And then we will put our top on. Of course, I'll put it on the wrong way. Just like that. And we're going to open our extra virgin olive oil. This is a little trash. Turn the power on. I'm going to pour a little bit in there. And then I'll start it. <laughs> And then we're going to get a glass bowl. I'm going to use my spatula just to push down. All the excess. So we're going to use regular spaghetti. I already salted my water. There we go. And then, of course, because I'm going to be using this, let me take you guys off of here and I'll put you onto this. Which I hope this stays. What? You can put your dog right there. Um, yeah, it's fine. Thank you. All right. So, here's our pot with boiling water. You guys don't mind my, my makeshift, um, tripod. It's not being friendly today. There we go. 
that works. I'm not making spaghetti, but we only use turkey in here. We don't eat beef. So I'm gonna break my pasta. Of course, it wants to go everywhere. Bad, bad, bad. Honey, lemon, garlic. Ooh, that sounds good. Ash is doing great. I talk to her like once a week. At home, everybody's at home. You guys will see her back in the salon soon. All right, so we're gonna take our tongs here. I'm gonna go ahead and start my fire for my salmon because I'm gonna go ahead and fry that up. I think I'm gonna use another half a box. Forget it. We don't like to use linguine for this. It becomes too much pasta, that's why we use spaghetti instead. So I just move them around in the pot. I'm also a firm believer of putting a little bit of olive oil in the water. I feel like it doesn't let the food stick, okay? I just feel like so. That's how I feel. Okay, so we're just gonna let our pasta go for eight minutes. So it is 7.39, so at seven, somebody put a timer for eight minutes. There we go. Just put your timer on for eight minutes for me, please and thank you. Eight minutes, peeps, eight minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna put away all of these goodies. So we have our heavy cream. We're gonna use our garlic again. I'm just gonna finish it out. We don't need any more salt and pepper because we just used what we needed. I'll keep my oregano, butter, and then these goodies. So I'm going to pan sear the salmon first, and then we'll make our um, creamy pesto sauce. Thank you. All right, so we're done with our pasta. So I'm just waiting on our pan to heat up. In the meantime, I'm gonna eat a piece of jackfruit. Anytime you're gonna pan sear fish, your pan has to be very, very hot. If not, the fish is gonna stick. Okay guys, so we're gonna pan sear our fish now. Mm -hmm. 
No? Okay guys, so we're gonna do skin side down first. I'll move you guys to this side so you can see. I'm going to bring you guys on this side so you guys can see better. There we go. So when you put your fish in the pan, you don't want to move it around again until it's time for you to flip it or it'll break apart. And that's another reason why you want to make sure your pan is very hot. Okay? In the meantime, we have our pesto here. We have our heavy whipping cream. We have our garlic. We're going to use the rest of that. And then we have our cherry gold butter. I like to make both sides of the salmon nice well the skin side to be really crispy and then when you flip it you're not going to really crisp the flesh side but if you like it crisp you can. Thank you. saying this recipe and trying this real soon. Nice. Yeah, I, I went to culinary school. I have this love for cooking, if anyone, no one knows. You do need smell of vision for this. All right, so our salmon is seared on one side. So, so we're gonna flip it. And you wanna be as gentle as possible with your salmon when you're flipping it because it will flake on you and fall apart. So we want to try to keep the pieces nice and together. Ah, uh, you can arrive tomorrow. <laughs> you can smell it? It smells great, yeah. It smells amazing. In the meantime, in between time, I'm going to get my colander ready for the pasta. You don't want to put, you kind of want to leave it al dente so that it will soak up all of that creamy sauce that we're about to make to put with our salmon. So it's going to stay for two more minutes and then we're going to take it out. Now, with the heavy whipping cream, what I'm also gonna do is make a roux. So before I even pour the cream in the pot, I'm going to make the roux with butter and flour. Thank you, Louise. Cecilia, you're in a Chloe. <laughs> Jayla, we don't reopen until the 17th. Little mama, I was in the edge of my hair and I was dry, what do I do? Oh, it shouldn't be that dry. Just use a warm towel and wipe your hairline. It should be okay. All right, so our salmon is nicely seared. So we're gonna go ahead and take it out. So we're not focused on cooking it 100% all the way through. Okay. because we're gonna finish it off in the oven. So our oven is on 375. That's 
also I'm keeping it on the baking sheet as well because we're going to finish it off in the oven, which that would only be about 10 minutes max. So while our sauces are finishing, our salmon will finish. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. nice and creamy, right? garlic 
Hey girl, can you throw that stuff away from me? So even though I'm making the roux, I'm still gonna go ahead and let it pick up that garlic flavor first. I do, I have another channel, but this is where my following is, so I do this channel. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pour on our cream slowly. Our stove is on medium. All I'm doing is cook. Oh yeah, dinner will be ready shortly anyway. So I'm gonna allow this to warm and then I'll, once this warms, then I'll add the rest of the cream. What you don't wanna do is add too much at one time and then you end up not having enough or you end up making it too runny and then you can't control it and now you're having to go backwards. So that's another reason why I do half first and then I throw the other half in after. Can you give me the Parmesan cheese out of the fridge? And then we're gonna start adding our cheese too. And then we'll add our pesto in. It should be a... Um... So we're gonna add our Parmesan cheese as well. And that's another reason why you don't want to add too much salt either because Parmesan cheese is salty. And you can add mozzarella cheese if you like. For me, I'm going to use... Do we have mozzarella cheese in there? The shredded one? Hmm? If we do, can you give me some? So you notice our cream is getting a lot thicker slowly. This is when you start whisking in more. No, no. no mozzarella? No, 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 no. Okay, no, thank you. That's why I said start with a little bit. Well, Allow no. it to warm and you thicken. Mozzarella? No, not that one. I don't want that. Allow it to warm, and then I'll show you guys how thick it's gotten already. Okay, it's coming along. So you just take your time. My stove is on medium. I whisk it as I go. I'm not gonna add any salt or anything until after I put the pesto in there. I do, we eat snapper, grouper. We're real specific to what we eat. <laughs> You guys see that? Yeah, that's what we want. So I'm just gonna whisk in some more of the cream because I'm gonna use this entire box of cream here. I have a nice size family and we have a good amount of pasta and we also, we don't like dry pasta. So that's the next thing. All right, so we're gonna allow that to warm and cream and, and get nice and thick. I went to Ryan's one time and the salmon didn't taste good, so I haven't tried. You gotta, I make jerk salmon, honey glazed salmon, ginger honey salmon, pesto salmon. Like we, we eat a lot of salmon here. All right, so in the meantime, while that's working, I'm gonna go ahead and add my oregano. If you have bay leaves, you can add a bay leaf, which I think I do have bay leaves, so I'm gonna add one. And just because you're adding pesto, that doesn't mean that you can't add any other seasonings, guys. Like, don't be afraid to season your food. Okay, season your food. Food need for season. Even my kids will tell me, oh, mom, they need some salt. <laughs> they drive me nuts. So we're gonna add our bay leaf. Just one. And I'm gonna put my salt back. If I do need salt, I'll add a little bit of garlic salt. Yeah. 
Our salmon will be done in about five minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and add some more Parmesan cheese. And then we're going to add our pesto. So you can do this without the cream, but I'm using the, the cream to stretch my pesto. I don't have a lot of pesto and no one wants dry noodles. So what I did is make it a creamy pesto instead of just 100% pesto. Yes, decent amount of seasoning. I don't cook with salt. Yeah, I don't, I don't cook with a lot of salt either. I use salt just to like flavor the water, that kind of thing, but I don't know. I'm not a salt and pepper that seasoning. I'm Jamaican. We use a lot of seasoning. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Now we eat smoked or grilled salmon. I don't like smoked salmon. So if you notice, you can see the steam rising. And as the steam rises, our sauce is getting nice and creamy. I'm not going to add the pesto until my cream is as creamy as I need it to be. So once this kind of comes to a boil, at that point I know it's ready for the pesto. But you don't want to put your pesto sauce in there and your cream is still runny because now you're just going to put runny and runny and now everything is just going to be a big liquefied pot. So that's the reason why I use my whisk and I keep whisking it because you don't want it to stick either. Can you come sample? <laughs> yeah, they're actually sitting right at the table right now. Say hi, girls. Hi. They're kind of watching me, but they're also kind of watching TV at the same time. All right, so we're gonna, you don't wanna walk away from this. You wanna just kind of watch it. I see you looking real good, giving some incentive to my hair and nails. Hey, nice. Food channel of your own. I have another channel, which is my um, Elite Total Body Care channel. So if you guys aren't following that channel yet, please go and follow that channel because I will actually cross over. That channel is made for cooking and what, like health and wellness and stuff like that. So I keep whisking because you do not want your cream to stick to the pot. You have to keep it moving, keep it churning. So right now all we have is Parmesan cheese, oregano, a bay leaf, butter oh i'll just say a roux we made a roux to thicken up our cream and i didn't add any other seasonings or salts or anything of that nature so you guys can see it's coming it's creamy enough but i'm gonna allow it to come up to a boil and then in the meantime i'm gonna taste it to make sure and how you can also tell if it's ready, put your spoon, and if it coats the spoon, it's creamy. If it runs off the spoon, it's not creamy. So how fast it comes off the spoon will tell you. Nice, not salty at all, which is great. I have, a I have a feeling that I will need to add a little bit of garlic salt, but I'm gonna wait until after I put my pesto in there. And then if you wanna add more cheese, can definitely add more cheese, which I am going to add the remainder of my cheese. Christian, come on. Tell me how's it looking, guys? How's it looking? If it's looking good, please thumbs up this video. If it is looking good, nice and creamy, please thumbs up this video. Your thumbs up tell me if I'm doing a good job. Oh yeah. And I do it low and slow. Low and slow is always best. I don't jack the heat up to high. I know everybody is like sometimes in a rush, but I didn't do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the salmon out of the oven. Our salmon is ready. So put 
put it on one of our little hot trays here. Let it rest. Clean off my counter here. area. We want to keep the kitchen clean, of course. That is important. Keep the kitchen clean. All right, so we're going to take our pesto sauce here. It started to separate because I let it sit. So I'm just going to pre-mix it before I pour it into the cream here. All right. Let me take this off. All right, so now we're gonna throw in our pesto. Mix it in nice and fresh. If you like your pesto thick, then you're not gonna use as much olive oil. I could have left it thick, but I didn't. And then I'm just whisking it together. So this is a creamy pesto. This is just is not just a hundred percent pesto. So you guys see how our sauce has transformed. Oh, Nutribullet is my best friend now. They have the one that um you can, it heats up your sauces and stuff. Like you can make sauces in it. I didn't get that one though, I was cheap. I got a $99 one. So we're just gonna mix this really well. Our pasta is ready over here. All right, so I think that's ready. So I'm gonna take my spoon and just see if I need to add any salt. It needs a little salt, so we're gonna add some gem garlic salt. And you wanna ease in with the salt because you don't wanna over salt it and you can mess around and just so just ruin the sauce that you just spent all that time making. So I'm gonna whisk it in. Anytime I'm adding salt, I'll allow it to come to a boil. Every time I add the salt, I let it come back up to a boil. So I know that the salt is really incorporated and then I'll try it again to see if it needs more salt. That's me, I'm one of those kind of people. I'm like a perfectionist in food. So you don't wanna over salt your food. So the moment I see the first bubble, I'll taste it again. Now, if you don't want too much of a garlic taste, which we like garlic taste, so it don't really bother us, then you can just use Himalayan pink salt, um, coarse sea salt, or just iodized salt is your choice. All right, let me taste it again. I'm gonna add some Himalayan pink salt. Let me do it this way. And I know after this, we should be good to go because remember you're adding pasta to this. So make sure your food is seasoned before you add the pasta because after you add the pasta, you cannot season it again. So if you wanna perfect your sauce before you add anything to it. And I leave the bay leaf in there until it's time for me to share it out. Somebody does accent something. What is the name of the other channel? Elite Total Body Care. Will this video be on the site to watch again? Yes, I'm not gonna take it off. What are you planning to go with the leftover? 
And I eat leftovers. He don't eat leftovers, but I do. All right, last taste. Let's make sure that it's, it's good before we add our um, before we add our pasta. So let's check it. Perfect. It's slightly salty, slightly. But when you add egg, stop it. When you add the pasta, that takes away. Okay, so we're gonna turn off the stove. So here's a trick. This is something that I learned the other day, actually. Instead of me adding the pasta to the sauce, I add the sauce to the pasta. Reason being is you will end up with too much sauce and too little pasta. So to be on the safe side, I put some pasta at the bottom, I mean some sauce at the bottom, and then I take my pasta and I break it up, which this is the part that I hate the most because I always seem to get burnt. And then with this pasta that I already put in the bottom of the pot, I wish I had my silicone tongs. I'm, I'm, I don't wanna scrape up my pot, I'm funny. So some people be like, oh, that's enough. No, that's not enough. I like my sauce. I like my pasta sauce. <laughs> I'm funny like that. So I'm going to add my pasta to the pot. And then I'll show you guys what we're going to do with the leftover sauce because we are going to have some leftover. So you guys hold on one moment. All right. And all we're doing is just tossing our pasta into the sauce. So like right now, pasta ready. Yeah. So it's nice and creamy. Still has a little bit around the sides. Okay. So our pasta is ready. Let's taste it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna move this over here. And we're gonna take our rest of our cream and put it there. All right. If I was in a restaurant, then of course I'd have to worry about cross contamination and all kind of blah blah blah. Boom boom boom. We're not to worry about that. So we're gonna take our salmon and we're just gonna put it in with the sauce. Because we have extra sauce and nobody wants dry fish. Now, if you want to keep yours dry, you can definitely do so. Get the plates, guys. We don't want to dry food. <laughs> Most Jamaicans like dry food. I don't like dry food. Please put some sauce on my food, please. <laughs> I'm one of those people. Sauce, please. Thank you. All right, so we're just gonna take our sauce and just kind of throw it over the top. Our stove is off. We're not cooking the salmon anymore. It's already cooked. We're literally just adding the sauce. Our salmon is ready to go. <laughs> all right guys we're ready to eat so what i'm going to do go ahead and put my clean up my area because we're going to go ahead and start plating 
So you want to make sure your area is ready for plating. That's very important. So we're just gonna throw out what we don't need. bring you guys over to my side here so you can see how we are going to do this. I'm going to bring you guys back here. <laughs> You're so funny. Alright, so we're going to put the pasta first. Of course, I dropped some. Explosion happen. Alright, so we have our somewhat nest of pasta, right? So this is the, the husband's plate, so we're going to put his first just like that. Wow. Big spoon of sauce. And our plate is ready. <laughs> Thank you guys. Hi girls. Girls. Come get the um the drink sensor ready, please. This is my plate, so I'm going to go ahead and put mine. Yes, baby. All right, so this is what it looks like. Creamy pesto salmon pasta. That's what I call it. Drinks? Yeah, we drink water with our dinner. You guys want water or juice? Juice. Of course, they say they want juice. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. So, this is the husband's plate. His broke. I wish it didn't break. I'm really funny like that. So, that's his plate. My plate. And I'm about to make the kids' plates. So, they can eat. You guys want it in a bowl or on a, on a plate? Um, plate. So I'm a firm believer in the parents' plates are supposed to be actual plates. I don't know why. I just, that's how my family is. The man or the husband and the wife always have actual plates. For these three who likes to throw plates in the garbage, especially the big one and the little one, them are gonna eat those regular people <laughs> because if I leave it to them, they're gonna throw it in the trash, knowing them. 
Hey, Jenna, you want more than that? No, that's good. Alex, come. Want more than that? Yes, mommy. More than this? Yes. My son don't eat much, so. And he's the main culprit of throw the plate in the garbage with the fork and the spoon. So we just go. I learned the hard way with him. He doesn't really eat a lot of meat. I don't know why. He's funny. Am I the only person that was taught like that? Especially the man. The man is always supposed to have a glass plate, no matter if everybody else eats out of a paper plate. I was taught that way. The king of the castle is to have a true plate. Like, I would never put his food in a paper plate. All right, that's yours. Okay, take that in. All right. You clean my kitchen for a plate? You're so funny. Chuckling. My son used to throw every... No, they threw... Like, my son would throw his dish in the sink and break everything. Plenty cups and plates have gone away that way. Girl, what is it? Full of shady. Girl, you better jump on those paper plates. You never wash the dishes again. And I'm one of those kids that when I, I was growing up, I was like, I'm never going to wash dishes. I'm going to use a dishwasher forever. <laughs> and now that we barely touch the dishwasher, <laughs> you'll wash the dishes for a plate. Ebony, you're next. You're next. Here, baby. Actually, I'm going to be. Time. Time to eat, guys. Let's roll. So we have just a little bit left. So what I'm going to do is put it in a bowl. Only a smidge. Literally, like, I, I'm a true cancer. Like, I know how much food to really make. Like, that's all that's left. And this little piece of salmon here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just add the okay. sauce because they always want seconds anyway. All right. So you guys, thank you guys for joining me in the kitchen today to prepare my meal for my family. I know it's out of the scope of what I normally do, but I like to cook and I like to do hair. That's just how I do. Um, <laughs> baby was poking the phone. That's funny. We have had four houses with dishwashers and maybe use them a total of three times. No, I use the dishwasher, but not all the time. Mm -mm. Yep. But I hope everybody has an amazing evening. Thanks again, you guys, for tuning in to Elite Hair Care USA with a little bit of cooking. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you do try this recipe for your family, tell me how you like it. Tell me how it goes. This is actually the same way that we make rasta pasta, just without the pesto. And we use bell peppers. So the next time I do rasta pasta, I'll definitely do another live. So you guys are able to see how we make it. I love to cook. I cook almost every day, except for when we're extremely busy or I'm extremely tired from the day of dealing with the hair care stuff. So this is like my joy of life. This is my pastime. This is what I like to do. But like I said, bon appetit. And thanks guys for tuning in.